Today we are talking about message queues. I'm going to show you how to set up RabbitMQ in a Docker container and how to use the mass transit library to publish a message to the queue and consume it. I'm going to start from the Docker Compose file and just quickly highlight what are the changes that we need to make to enable running RabbitMQ. We have this section here where we are configuring our RabbitMQ Docker container. This is the RabbitMQ image that I'm going to be running in our application. I'm specifying a host name, which is what we are going to need when we are configuring the connection to our RabbitMQ instance. I'm specifying the volumes here so that we have persistent data and just the default user, username and password. Let's first configure our message brokers settings class, which I already added, which contains the host, the username and password that we're going to need to connect to our RabbitMQ instance. Inside of the application settings, I already added a section which takes care of connecting to the RabbitMQ instance running in a Docker container. And you can see that here's the host name that we specified in our Docker Compose YAML file. RabbitMQ by default is going to be exposed on the 5672 port. So I'm specifying that here as well. Let's configure our message broker settings now by calling builder services configure. We're going to specify the message broker settings class and we need to pass it the configuration section that's going to contain our settings. So I'm going to say builder configuration get section and we're going to return the message broker section from the application settings JSON file. Let's also configure our message broker settings as a singleton by calling builder services at singleton and we're going to use the service provider approach where we're going to take the service provider get required service of i options of message broker settings let me just move this into a new row so it's more visible and we're going to take the value so that we can directly inject the message broker settings from the dependency injection container and now let's add mass transit to our application let's find the nuget package that i'm looking for we need to add the mass transit library. So I'm going to look for it and let's install the mass transit library right here. And also let's install the mass transit RabbitMQ library so that we can connect it to RabbitMQ. So with the NuGet packages installed, let's go back to our program.cs and let's see what we need to add. So we're going to call builder services add mass transit and let's see how we're going to configure this. We're going to specify a Lambda function to apply our configuration. So the first thing that we have access to is the bus configurator. And let's see what we can do here. The first thing that we need to do is tell it which transport to use. So I'm going to say using RabbitMQ. And now I need to specify how it's going to connect to the RabbitMQ instance, which needs the bus registration context and the message bus factory configurator. So I'm going to create a Lambda method like this one with a context and a configurator and let's see what we can do inside. I'm going to use the context to resolve our message broker settings into a variable. So I can say context and I can say get required service of message broker settings. All right, let's resolve that directly. And now I can use these settings to connect to our RabbitMQ message bus. So I'm going to say configurator host I'm going to, for example, specify the URI here by calling settings host. And I also need to configure a username and password by accessing the host configurator where we can set the username and password. Again, we're going to pass the values from our message broker settings. So we need to specify the password and this should take care of connecting to our RabbitMQ instance. I'm also going to add another piece of configuration by calling bus configurator and I'm going to call the set kebab case and point the name formatter. I'm going to explain what this is in just a moment. So this is the configuration that's required to connect our mass transit library to our RabbitMQ message broker. And now let's see how we can use this. I'll go over to the command handler where we create a new product. And here let's for example say that we want to publish a message to a queue when we create a new product. Let's consider why a message queue is useful. When you publish a message to a queue, another service can subscribe to the queue and listen to the publishing of that message. And then it can asynchronously handle that message 
and perform some logic. An example would be what I'm trying to do right here to publish a product created message to the queue and then some component would handle that message and do what it needs to do. For example, it's going to store the product locally to have a local copy and it doesn't need to go to my service to ask for product information. Another example would be triggering a downstream process in another service when you publish a message to the queue. This is how you implement choreography based sagas where each component in the saga publishes a message when it completed its process which triggers the next step in the saga. So let's see what we need here to be able to publish a message to the queue. Let's define a new abstraction that's going to represent our event bus. So I'm going to add a folder here and let's add an I event bus interface real quick. So I event bus and this interface should only have one message. It's going to be asynchronous and we're going to call it publish async. It's going to be generic which accepts a message that it needs to publish and optionally it can accept a cancellation token. So we're going to use the I event bus interface in place of the I publish endpoint and in the implementation we're going to rely on the math transit library. So let's go back to the create product command handler. So here I want to inject the I event bus that we just created. Let's give it a proper name and inject it from the constructor. So now in the handle method when we have created our product and we have persisted it to the database is when the product is actually created. And now I can publish some message to the queue, which is going to tell some consumer that a new product is created. So I'm going to say await event pass publish async. And here we would publish our message, which would be the product created. Let's create it in the create product folder. Let's add a new class. So I'm going to name it product created and you can add event to it or you don't need to. I usually do, which is just a convention that I follow, but it's perfectly fine just leaving it without it. Let's make it a record and let's give it a few properties. I'm going to just add the ID of the product. So it's going to have get and in it. And let's add two more properties, which are going to be the name, which is a string. So name with a get and in it and let's give it a string empty as the default value and let's also add for example the product price so get init price all right now i'm going to go back to our create product command handler and let's create our product created event and we need to populate it to set the id property to the one on the product and the name to the one on the product and also the price to the one on the product so now that we have this in place, I can also pass in the cancellation token. And this is going to take care of publishing our product created event. So now after creating a product and persisting it in the database, we publish a product created event to our message queue. Let's implement the event bus interface first before handling the consumer for the product created event. So in the infrastructure project, I'm going to add an event bus class here. It's going to be internal and sealed, for example. And let's implement the I event bus interface. So we're going to need to reference the application project. Let's implement the interface. And the implementation is going to be very straightforward. This is going to require me to add the mass transit library. So I'm going to add the NuGet package here. So mass transit, let's install it. We need this one. And now inside of the event pass, I can say private read only I publish endpoint and we inject the publish endpoint from mass transit inside of the publish async method on our event pass. I'm just going to call the publish endpoint publish method. We specify our message and our cancellation token, and I can even specify a generic parameter here. You can see the compiler is complaining here because the definition of the publish method here requires the generic argument to be a reference type, which is a class. So let's go back to our event pass and add a generic constraint here that the generic argument T must be a class. So now if I go back to our event pass, it's going to need us to add the same generic argument. Let's do that right here. And now the published method on the published endpoint is no longer complaining and we can remove the generic argument. 
So this is the baseline implementation. It's just going to use the mass transit library and publish the message to the queue. We can await this if we want to, but generally it's not necessary to await it if you're just going to return a task that's going to be awaited somewhere else by the consumer. Let's actually make the event bus public just so that it's easier to register it as a service. And in the program.cs file, I'm going to add the service registration right under add mass transit. So I'm going to say builder services. For example, I can add transient i event pass and we specify the event pass implementation. So we configured our event pass and now our publish in the create product command handler is going to function correctly. And all that's left to do is to add a consumer for this message when it is published to the queue. Before I show you how to do this, of course, I'm going to need you to smash that like button and also subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss any of my future videos. With the mass transit library, it's very simple to consume a message because it exposes an iConsumer interface that you can consider and mass transit will take care of wiring up everything that's required to listen to the message queue, which is RabbitMQ in this instance, when a given message is published and then it's going to know to trigger your message consumer. I added the mass transit library reference to the application project so that I can have access to the iConsumer interface just to make this a little bit easier. So inside of the create product folder, I'm going to create a new class, which is going to be our product created event consumer. And let's see what we would have to do in here. I'm going to make it public, sealed, and we're going to inherit from the iConsumer interface, which is coming from the mass transit library. And we can specify our product created event as the generic argument and let's see what we need to implement. We need to implement the consume message, which comes with an argument of a consume context with a product created event as the generic argument. Let's see what we have access to on the context. The main thing you are interested about is the message, which is going to contain the product created event. And then you would use the data on the product created event to perform some business logic. Let's just make this very simple. I'm going to inject an i logger of product created event consumer. Let's call it logger, inject it from the constructor. And in the consumer, we're just going to say logger, log information, product created, and let's specify a placeholder for our product and pass in the product created event. So this is going to log some information whenever we create a product. And let's return a task completed task to satisfy the consume method. For the mass transit library, to be able to configure your consumer and wire everything up with RabbitMQ, you need to add one more piece of configuration. Inside of the add mass transit method, we're going to need to call the bus configurator and we're going to call the add consumer endpoint. And now we can specify our consumer, which is the product created event consumer. And this is everything that's required for mass transit to create the necessary abstractions in RabbitMQ. Let's send the API request from Postman to create a new product, which is going to hit our create product command handler. So we hit the breakpoint inside of our command handler. We create a new product, store it using the document session. And when calling save changes, it's going to be persisted inside of the database. So now we can go ahead and publish our product created event to RabbitMQ. And if I press continue, that's going to complete our command handler, but the publishing of the message to the queue is going to trigger our product created event consumer, where we just log the product information. If I open the context message, you can see that we have our product information, the ID, the name and the price. So we log that to the console. You can see that here we get an information log which contains our product created event. We return a completed task which completes our consumer. And it's going to also send an acknowledgement message to the RabbitMQ instance that we have successfully handled this message. Using message queues is a very powerful way to build decoupled systems. And we're going to explore this topic some more in the future videos. In the meantime, 
consider subscribing to my weekly .NET newsletter, which I send out every Saturday morning, and it has one useful .NET tip that you can easily implement. The link to join the newsletter is going to be in the pinned comment under this video. More than 8,000 .NET engineers have already subscribed, and I would love for you to join us. Until next time, stay awesome.